Uh, what I'm going to talk to you guys about is, you know, a partnership that we developed with Care Message four years ago. So we've been using uh, Care Message four years now, and we've always looked for uh, different ways to innovate the way we're doing our healthcare and uh, and providing services to our patients. Um, how many of you guys redid your mission vision statement? Uh, a precursor to the Affordable Care Act and we're looking to see the new patients you were going to see, all these new things that were going to come down the way because of the Affordable Care Act. Okay, one or two. We, we ended up doing this, uh, you know, very consciously. You know, we wanted to see the new types of patients that we were going to be engaging in the future. So what we did, uh, going from one health center to eight health centers within a matter of seven, uh, seven years, we said, how are, uh, how are we going to be able to include all these individuals into our you know, health center? Uh, we, uh, we decided to change our mission, and our mission now is a single uh, sentence. It's to provide excellent, comprehensive, and innovative health care services you know, accessible to the residents of San Gabriel Valley. As you may know, Los Angeles County is a huge metropolis overall. So, so providing services in San Gabriel Valley, we're talking about over 2.5 million individuals, okay? So growing from one health center to eight health centers, you know, allowed us to go from 6,000 under, uh, unduplicated patients before the expansion, and now uh, servicing 16,000 patients, unduplicated patients over the, the last seven years. The other thing that we wanted to be able to do is to be more comprehensive as part of our, you know, uh, new mission. So we started to include, um, you know, uh, dental expansion, we went through a retail pharmacy that we now own, we did telemedicine, we have optometry, we have podiatry, uh, we have uh, behavioral health and substance use. So what we wanted to do in this eight health centers is to provide a spoken hub model to provide services to, these uh, to our patients that we serve. One of the things that we wanted to look at is to maximize our organizations by actually in ensuring that we went from an episodic to a more value-based system. And one of the keys that we wanted to, uh, the way to do it was to really get our patients involved in their healthcare. So we wanted to turn the patients from being a passive, you know, uh, episodic and, and just coming in once a year into someone that could actually be an active participant of their own health. So what we wanted to do with our innovation as part of our mission is to go ahead and select a product where it would allow us to go ahead and take that concept from being a passive to an active by making sure that they were engaged in their own health. How did we do that? We created a, a, a patient engagement strategy that involved different uh, aspects. One of the aspects being you know, the ability for us to do text messaging. Uh, and one of the technologies that we wanted to make sure is that by defining this particular strategy is that we wanted to look at a product that wasn't tailored to one specific intervention. And what I mean by that is that with Care Message, we were able to go ahead and do different things for, different, uh, uh, for the patients that allowed us to have one single text messaging system that would allow us to achieve our, uh, our goal. So one of the things that we wanted to make ensure is that, you know, we were using the right technologies for the services that we were expanding. So if we wanted to do pharmacy, you know, outreach, we wanted to have one system that we were able to do that. If we wanted to do appointment reminders, only one system. And that's what the key that we were looking for in our innovations, in our strategy. So how did we end up using care message and the uses? Well, we use uh, care message for health insurance appointment reminders. And what that means is every year, there is a renewal that has to happen with the Affordable Care Act. So it allows us to go ahead and start the process early on to remind all our patients to go ahead and start the enrollment process. We also use it as a means of they enrolled, have they made their payment for their enrollment? If not, we send them a message. We also send them a message of anything that they need to be able to do for their coverage as well. We do it for a patient outreach, and I'm gonna be talking a bit more about, about this, but in California, we have managed care. So what we need to be able to do is we get assigned lives every, uh, every month. 
So we have to outreach to all these new members that don't know who we are and let them know about what we provide and how to go, go about accessing you know, our care system. We also get, send them a, um, um, a booklet that allows them to go ahead and see what they need to do in events of an emergency or if they need to get a hold of us after hours as well as the benefits that they can get. Uh, health education, and this is what I'm going to concentrate on. Uh, we did a study with UC Berkeley about patient engagement related to text messaging in the Latino population in order for us to see whether we can reduce you know, their, uh, you know, their hemoglobin and whether they were able to accept a community support system through care message. So the research that we did is uh, the Diabetes uh, Text Messaging Education Program. And we did a, a total of 50, and it took 12 weeks. They got different messages every week. They could also talk to our educator and talk to us about any issues that they may have. But it really was a self-supporting group to be able to support themselves in achieving their particular goals. Uh, again, the, you know, the hypothesis was, you know, when we did this study, is that our population doesn't have phones. Our population does not respond well to these type of messages, right? Our population does not engage because they're not interested in their health. So the hypothesis was, can we prove that statement to be incorrect? And with this particular study, as you can see, uh, yeah we were able to actually see an improvement in their hemoglobin. You know, there was a reduction that we noticed with, uh, with the average estimated reduction in hemoglobin of, you know, uh, 0.62%. Uh, uh, so half of a percent, you know, decrease of an overall, you know, uh, high uh, hemoglobin. So at the end of the day, the other big hypothesis that we did was the biggest myth about patients not being interested in their own health. And our strategy was to ensure that the engagement with patients was there in order for us to move on with all our different populations and increase our number of, uh, you know, uh, of other you know, chronic diseases to get them involved on, 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 on getting themselves better. You know, the, the most highest, you know, uh, in, uh, engaged patients, you know, responded with their experience was, you know, beyond our expectations. After the, uh, the 12 week course, we were able to really see the difference in even their own way they communicated with other patients. They wanted to continue the educational community that I had developed because they themselves were entrusted in their well being. And they saw that other patients as well were interested in their success. So at the end uh, of uh, the study, you know, we looked at their control and we found out that this was possible. And you know, it, that, uh, when we interviewed the, the patients, you know, they enjoyed the emotional support that they got from each other. And the text messaging over the, on, you know, in the program within the 12 weeks, allowed them to develop, you know, self-confidence that they could do something effective for their health. Um, so we began to adopt this methodology and we're going to be doing another study with the University of Pennsylvania starting next week on, I, on IFOBT and seeing how well, you know, patients can also uh, get involved in their own health and be able to do it through this particular methodology. And what we found is that, you know, reinforcement through text messaging does get the patients involved. And it's, it's, a, it's such a technology that it's easy for us to use. You know, we get a list from our EMR, we put it into uh, an Excel format, and anybody that has ever done a Excel, you know, uh, Word document, you know, uh, you know merger, that's as easy as it gets, okay? And we're, we're also working with our EHR vendor to do more things so we could integrate it into our EHR as well. We currently do that with appointment reminders, but what we're gonna be doing now is going bi-directional 
in order for us to ensure that the data that we're getting from uh, the patients is put into their individual you know, uh, charts. So the, uh, the overall you know, uh, reduction that we've seen in our no-show as we went into this, uh, this particular uh, you know, uh, EHR uh, care message uh, interoperability was the fact that we have actually have seen uh, our no-show rate go from 21 now to 15. So we've seen that very effective, uh, and we do it not only through text message, but we also do you know, calls, and we do it 72 hours before. We don't do it the day before. Uh, and the reason being is that we found that it allows patients the ability to go ahead and tell us ahead of time, you know, or remind them ahead of time rather than one day, because it's pretty difficult for our community to drop anything they can do if their appointment is the next day, and we found out that it was too late if we did it the day before. So that, I think, is the other you know, success. But the overall uh, you know, appointment and, and making sure that everything is done you know, uh, as a secondary call for 48 hours is really making the difference on the no-show. So this is how Care Message has actually allowed us to go ahead and at, at least in three of the different items that, or, or fields that we use are, is very, uh, very successful and that allows us to go ahead and, you know, and, and reach our patients and reach our strategic uh, initiative that we started about patient engagement and one of them being enrollment. So going back to innovations, um, our health center has been a, a, you know, a, a, a mini hub of innovations. So we've done that through Point Care, Talking Service, and uh, Hitch Health uh, that allows us to go ahead and make it possible for us to redeploy our efforts from employing a lot of individuals that used to do a lot of uh, number crunching, redeploying their efforts into meaningful analytical as well as you know, educational with our patients. So uh, we are about to launch another initiative as a, as a hub with care coordination. So uh, hopefully, you know, I'll be back whenever they invite me back to be able to uh, let you know about uh, care coordination and how we're doing that through, uh, you know, a, a, a new system as well. With that being said, I'm going to introduce you to Vineet, and he is the uh, CEO, President of uh, Care Message. Um, really, thank you so much for um, that wonderful presentation, uh, Sergio. Please. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about Care Message as an organization and um, why we have enjoyed, obviously, and appreciated this partnership with ChapCare, but many other organizations like, like theirs across the country. Um, first of all, Care Message is a nonprofit organization. And that may be a surprising thing to share in this particular context where every other vendor of every other company is for profit. But specifically, um, when I co-created Care Message six years ago, um, I wanted to create an organization that could serve as many different segments of the healthcare population and healthcare um, um, system in the U.S. that are ignored and underserved by existing technology platforms. And consequently, the patient populations that are ignored um, and uh, understudied and underserved by existing technology solutions. So when we develop Care Message um, and have built this organization over the last six years, uh, we have prioritized the needs of underserved patient populations that are primarily uh, non-English speaking, that are primarily um, living in situations that make it very difficult for them to access health care, that make it very difficult for them to make healthier choices and make decisions because of systemic um, and underlying issues. Um, and how can you encourage, motivate, uh, nudge these populations to make the right decisions in conjunction and in partnership with the providers, um, primarily community health centers that serve them? So when we develop content, when we develop messaging, we develop it at a fourth grade reading level below and make it available in multiple languages. We take into account things like social determinants of health. Um, when we're recommending recipes for diabetes, we're asking patients, do you have access to a kitchen at home where you can cook your meals? And if they answer a particular way, if they answer no, then we recommend diabetic friendly recipes that are delivered in 160 characters that somebody can make without having needing to have access to a kitchen with ingredients that cost less than $4. Those are the types of things that make our um, organization's mission really important and really relevant to organizations like ChapCare 
um, that are not just looking for a texting solution, which there are you know, innumerable uh, uh, ones across, across even this hall here today, but really looking for a partner that's specifically tailoring and, 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 and targeting their approach to be respectful of the circumstances that many of their patients find themselves in. And we're proud of the success that we've seen with, with CHAPCARE and many other organizations across the country that have seen improvements in fit kit returns for colorectal cancer screenings and mammograms and, and other types of things that are aligned with UDS measures and HEDIS measures and other things that are really important when you look at the, the dollars and cents here and making sure that this is a worthwhile investment for you to be able to make. Not to mention that um, every time we work with a community health center, we make care message available at no cost or a minimal cost to a free or charitable clinic in, in the US because ultimately this is all supporting health centers is also about supporting the broader safety net ecosystem that exists in these communities. So we're proud of the work that we have done uh, and we're hopeful to do even more. Um, I'm excited to share that having attended CHI for the first time three years ago, uh, since then, uh, Care Message is now um, supporting and has um, uh, the ability to support more than 10% of all health center patients in the United States are um, active on Care Message. So more than two and a half million patients um, on, on Care Message that are from community health centers in 40 states across the country. So really excited to be able to share some of the successes with you all. Really excited to learn more about the challenges you're facing with patient engagement and connecting with your patients and uh, sending them relevant information, collecting information back from them and doing so in a way that's integrated and in a way that's respectful of their circumstances. So um, we're in booth 320. We would love to talk to you. Uh, thank you, Sergio, for your wonderful comments and, and, and presentation. Uh, thank you, everybody, for attending. Um, we're here to help. Thank you very much.